What's going on guys, no guys here, welcome back to another video. Now in today's video I want to explain how to play the 4 2 um, In case you're wondering about the tactics and instructions, I'd, I'd recommend watching my other video on tactics and instructions that kind of explain, you know, what tactics you should have, how the instructions work, etc. So I just want to confirm one thing though before we go into the game. Um, in terms of the CDM, I'd recommend either medium defensive and high attacking work rates or either high high. The same for the right back as well. I know Tomato is high medium as in high defensive and medium work rates. I meant to say medium high or high high. I just use Tomato there because he gets the job done if that makes sense. But realistically, medium and then a medium defensive work rates, high attacking does work the best. I'm going to explain to you how to use the 4 triple 2, how I use it in game, how I build up, how I defend with it. And how to generally use it in all aspects of play. That's the key. Don't forget this is attacking formation as well. So this is not a formation to close the game out. Uh, people always ask me as well, you know you're defending in a 4-4-2 and you're attacking in like a 3-1-2-4. What if you don't want to have what if you want to have one of your right backs on stay back while attacking so you don't have a back three? You can also do that as well. People always ask me that question as well. So I'm gonna quickly give you a, a brief, a brief look down and a low down, should I say? It's over here. So if you really want to, you don't have to have your right back on during attack. You can even want to stay back while attacking, but I believe it gives the extra element of attacking width and unpredictability. This right centre back needs to be very fast. That's why you can't play something like the Van Dyke here. This right, this this guy's going to be covering almost the centre back and the right back role. So try to put a fast player there. So don't put someone like Blanc there or something. I mean, just to give you an example, I'm going to take if I put Blanc there, he's too slow. So I'll take someone off. Um, the rest is not that important. The rest of the team is not that important. Apart from the CDM, apart from the CDMs and uh, the actual right back, the rest is not that important. So I'm going to explain to you how to use it. So again, we're going to change to a 4 triple 2 kickoff. We're going to use our striker. I do have the eye track as well, so be sure to watch this video in... I think it's on 2K now. I'm actually uh, recording in, so you can see the eye track a bit better. Don't forget to turn this video to 2K. Now again, kickoff. Um, defending again from the front. Remember, the key thing as well when you're defending, even from kickoff as well, is just try not to be too aggressive. Try to be more conservative. This is a question I always get asked a lot. From kickoff, do you be conservative or do you be aggressive? I always be conservative. You know, it's better to play safe than ask questions later than, than to make a mistake again. Now, to, using your strikers is one thing that's very important in a 4 triple 2 In my opinion, you shouldn't really use um, you know, your back line at all, in my opinion, unless you really have to outside the box. Um, Unless unless you're out the opponent's outside the box and you really have to, then you can. So again, here does it's I mean by doubling up. So again, Abamyang um, and my right backs so I'm doubling up on him. And if I pass the ball away, now again, this is my right back. Now you see how Wamba Saka is now covering for the right back. If you look focus on Wamba Saka for a second, see how he's covering for Semedo. So bear that in mind. Now Semedo is always going to be free as well, because he's going to be kind of in the middle of the pitch wherever that right back is. So do bear that in mind as well. Now you see, now you see it becomes a back three. So that's why it's really important that that right centre back has pace. If you have a faster left centre back, then let's say for example, you've got Virgil van Dijk and let's say Gomez in centre back. I'd recommend putting Gomez um, on the right centre back role just to have that element of safety and that way you can recover. So we go down the wing again. We're going to go inside the box. Now again, we have, oop, that was meant to be outside the box. Now again, because you've got four players inside the box, um, I do think Trent makes the appropriate amount of runs when you're at like an like an outside the box position from a cross situation. Don't forget the players in the box tactic only refers to the amount of players in the box from a crossing situation. That's one thing people get confused. And again, trying to let them cut inside. So we get the ball back now again. I'm going to do a quick one too. Um, now that's our right back. Now we don't be running forward our right back too much. So we're going to try passing the ball back to him. Let Aubameyang overload and overlap. That way you can distribute the ball to Aubameyang. That way if you do lose the ball, at least the right back somewhat stays in position. As you can see, He'll go back to his natural shape. Okay, let's start attacking now. So again, I like to normally just wait. So this is the key to break down part of the bus. So normally just switch the ball. As you can see, Semedo is running forward. You can see surging forward. Um, now you're going to have like this kind of midfield three. Now don't forget, as I said, Wamba Saka is covering for the right back as well. So if you do get the ball, Wamba Saka, and you're scared you're going to lose it, just pass the ball away. Get a good chance here down the wing. Again, just focus on Trent now, the, the, the left CDM, should I say. Focus on his movement. You see how he moves kind of inside a little bit. He's in this pivotal position. This is really important because you can pick up the ball here. And that's why the I would say medium defensive high attacking work rate is really important. And then here you have your right back as an outlet play. You see he's also dragging away St. Maximin. Do you see that? So even his right back, even if you don't want to pass to him, he's also going to drag. See how St. Maximin is getting dragged away? 
If you, if, you, if you look at my eyesight, see how look look how far Saint Maximin is being dragged away, and look how much space has now created for Aubameyang. You see that? So that's what I mean by doubling up. You know, you're forcing your opponent, or you're forcing your, forcing your opponent's AI to mark someone he doesn't want. That is actually really bad lag. But you see that? You for as you saw with with Semedo, what happened was when Semedo was going up front, um, he was going forward like this, and he locked onto the opponent's uh, ram. So his your opponent had two players. He had hit a lamb. And he had um, a left back. Now his left back was man marking Aubameyang, and his lamb was man marking Semedo. Even on stay back while attacking, because Semedo went back backwards again, and because he has that ele element of being an inverted right back, it created more space for Aubameyang down the wing. And this is going to be the outlet player. So even if even if AI decides not to mark him, he will still create space regardless towards the middle of the pitch. Seems to be my opponent is making some changes. Again, we're going to bring someone close here. We're going to do a fixture outside the box. Okay, now we're going to pass the ball to Canton. We're going to distribute back to one of our strikers. Didn't you save you? Oh, that's benefit to you save you. That will do. Oh, offside, unlucky. Again, now when you're when you're defending, remember use your two strikers. You're defending in a 4-4-2, so use your two strikers first. Press back with your striker. Don't use your lamb. Unless you use your striker first. So I'm using my my right striker first. Then I'm using my left striker. See, I'm bringing back my strikers first, maintaining the integrity of my midfield four. Then, when I have to use my mid 4 4, then I can use them. This is how you maintain defensive stability. Because a lot of people that I'll be using are using the 4 triple 2 below, uh, below elite. A lot of people struggle with defending. Again, we're going to do a fake shot stop because you've got nowhere to go. There's no one with us. We're going to do a quick 1 2 backwards. Trigger our and make that run. Now we're outside the box again. Now we're going to make a pass. Oops, that was meant to be Semedo. Unlucky. We lost the ball now. We're going to run back with Semedo to a right back wall to cover for Adama. Just in case, just in case Adama doesn't make that pass, which I think he is about to. Um, and then I quickly change to my right back, try to apply pressure. Run back from my other, other left center back over there to recover. So you see, that was just what I like to call covering runs. You see, I'm predicting where my opponent is going to be before he actually does it. And I do it in a timely manner. I, I make sure I don't make him. Oh, I made a mistake there, actually. Do a ball away. Try to do a ball work. And now I'm in trouble. Going to go back. Going to force him to stay down the wing. Try to avoid him getting inside the box. Here, Max is right footed. So I'm going to force him. Oops. On his right foot. Well, I tried my best to. Again now. That's Aubameyang. Now also down the middle is important. You don't have to always focus. Oops. That's a bad, bad pass. That's one thing that you shouldn't do by the way. These um these risky passes. You should always play systematically. Move the goalkeeper here from goal kick. It's a bad habit that I have when I play fast. I'll be honest. Um, I'll be honest. Because I get away with it. I use it quite a lot. Because normally I can outscore my opponent. But if you do struggle to defend, the most important thing is when you're holding the ball is don't take any risks. Um, especially when you're playing like me under delay, um, you don't want to take any risks whatsoever. So again, got my CDM running forward, surging forward as you can see. Do a quick pass to Aubameyang. Need a bit of some more support back to the other CDM. Going to pass the ball down. We're going to do an L1 trigger down the wing. And we're going to play a through ball now to Mahrez. We're going to do a fake shot inwards. I'm going to do a lofted pass now to Neymar, or that was meant to be to Neymar, but Aubameyang was there. Now, the only reason why Aubameyang was free as well is because Semedo was actually getting marked by St. Max. Man, you might have to go back and watch that as well. Um, if you saw as well, Semedo basically um, created space uh, for St. Max man, as well. Again, one and jockey, not be too aggressive. Hit the ball out, perfect. Again, with the goalkeeper again towards that angle, so you can't go for a near post. Again, going to shield the ball because the guy's behind me. Play a bit safe here. I'm a bit in trouble now. I'm just going to go back now. See, this is the key. When you're in trouble, just go back. Lob the ball. The opposite side will always be free. Quick one, two. Um, I know that's my left back, though. So I, I want to give the... I just want to make the pass quickly because he's free. Otherwise, I wouldn't have made that pass. Down the wing. Fake shot. Stop. Haven't really got any support. So I'm just going to go back. It's people that people, people str struggle with a lot is they don't go back. See, again, I go back all the way. I'm, I'm still pushing him. I'm outside the box. Um, so he's pressed me quite well. Again, we see that gap there. Team press, it looks like it's coming in, in clutch for him. I think he's on team press or pressure and every touch anyway. Again, that's my right back. So I'm going to run back to my right back to occupy that position. Because we see Trent, uh, not Trent, Adama making a run. So half time, 1-0. Hope you understood some, some key aspects of this formation. How you defend with it, how you attack with it. Now we're going to get onto the real juice stuff. How to attack with it in full force. Um, in all honesty, the most important thing when you're attacking... It's stability and understanding when and how to make a movement. Okay, let's go. So we've got the lion's share possession. I'll be honest, when I make these tutorials, this is something that's interesting as well. When I make these tutorials, I don't actually meant I'm not meant to have this much possession. 
I just that when I'm when I'm trying to speak about something and do it at the same time, it actually slows me down. So I end up holding the ball a lot more than I should. So I don't actually have 60% possession in the game. I normally have like 50%, maybe even less sometimes. I have normally like 47, 50%. Again, going to run and Now we're in trouble. We're going to use our CDM to defend first. This is where Conservative Inceptions come in check. You see how they don't be too aggressive. Made a mistake there. We're going to run back with Trent as well. Again, being safe. Not using our centre backs unless we have to absolutely need to. We're going to do a ball because he's next to me. Go away. Create that space. We can fucking feel a bit of heavy delay on my um, on my joystick actually. I really feel a bit of heavy delay. Again, use my striker to defend. We're going to run back with Neymar here. Maintain a midfield four. Run back, run back, run back, run back. Now switch player. Fake shot stop, run the jockey, quick passing, get out of there. Now again, we can go this side, quick one, two, oops. I need to, now I realize I've got a bit of a delay as well, so I'm just going to slow down my play just a little bit. I think I'm playing too fast football, I need to guarantee things, because you see, when it, when it comes to delay, the most important thing is you guarantee safety, you know, you face a player, then you make a pass, you know. You play the more safe option as opposed to the more risky option L1 trigger. But you can also see Kante on the edge of the screen. Pass the ball to Kante. Now Semedo, he's always going to be somewhat free as you can look at Semedo. I mean he's also draw, drawing away St. Maximum which is actually create. Look, if you watch for example the right hand side, look how there's more space created in the middle of the pitch because of the way St. Maximum drifted apart. We see Aubameyang making that amazing, amazing run. That was honestly a world class run by Aubameyang. I'm sure you pretty, pretty much saw that run. Pretty, pretty nice goal in the end. But you see, the key is just being patient with this formation. Don't be aggressive. That's the one thing I would say. Oh, he's disconnected. That's the one thing I would say. Um, just be patient. You know, don't be too aggressive. Just when you have the ball, be patient. Like, for example, like here. Actually, we weren't even sure the last game. By the way, a quick tip. If you watch the last highlight, yeah, you can actually see the very last thing happened. So watch the last highlight. Let it play out. This is the, this is the first goal that we scored. Pretty nice lofted pass. Okay, now, if you want to watch the last, or before there used to be a glitch to watch the entire game, but if you want to watch just that bit, wait for this screen where nothing happens, press R3, and now we can rewind and watch the goal. So, for example, over here, you can even you can even watch um, Semedo. So, we're going to get, we're going to go over to Semedo. If we can go to him quickly. There we go. I think that should be, okay, Semedo, look, so we're defending in a 4-4-2, right? Defending in a 4-4-2, Semedo's a right back. Now, as soon as we get the ball back, Watch, so as soon as we get the ball back, Semedo makes the run going forward. Now watch St. Maximin. St. Maximin, also, look, see, look, now I'm doubling up down the wing. Once I get the ball with Semedo, I watch St. Maximin, he's there, he's coming towards me. I have the ball. Now I make the pass away, okay? Now watch say, now watch Semedo. Semedo is almost free on this side, playing like a right centre mid. Now watch this. St. Maximin also gets locked. So what you're doing here is you're creating a lock kind of system. So you're letting his AI kind of lock onto this player and you're letting his AI lock onto that player. This is especially when someone uses comeback and defense. This is why it's so useful against Park the Bus. Now look how much space in the middle of the pitch now. You see that? Even with even though he's playing a rigid 4-2-3-1, look how much space has now created in the middle of the pitch. And you see now that actually gives space now because now look how much space is now between. Look at the distance. What's happening is normally what would happen here is um, the, the right back or the left back in the situation will tuck inside. And St. Maxim will kind of go over and mark a Aubameyang. That's what sometimes would happen um, with everyone on comeback and defense. But because there's two players down the wing, because you've almost got two players, a 2v2 situation, you created a ga greater gap between his right, well, should I say left center back and his left back. You see that? And that space, all I needed to wait for the perfect opportunity. And again, long ball, the players making runs by themselves. Look here. Then Aubameyang then gets a chance to make a run inwards. And see that he makes that darting run inwards. I didn't even challenge him. You see that? That's the key. I didn't even press any buttons. I didn't say, I didn't do an L1 trigger. I didn't do anything at all. All I did is very patient. I just waited. See, that's the key. You just have to wait. See, watch here. Change the angle a little bit, actually, because it's a bit, bit better example. You can see, you can see a bombing there. Look, watch. As soon as the pass is being made, he made a mistake by dragging the player out of position, but he was kind of forced to because, look, see, remember I, remember I said back in my tutorial, it's a 4v4. So you got the 4v4 situation. And you've got the right back and you've got the right center mid causing havoc on this side. So you've got the right back there and the right center mid around about here roughly causing havoc. So you see once you're in the final third, if he does make a mistake, as I said, like he did, then someone like Aubameyang can run into the gap and then score a terrific goal like that. 
Um, even even on when even the first goal, if we go over the first goal, we can see over here. Watch, you can see. Look, it's got, it's still four v four. You see that as well, and you see as well Saint Maximin. We're gonna go over to Saint Maximin now. Well, let's actually not. Let's let's stick on this. Let's stick on this guy. So you see, it's a four v four. For, for, every, for every one of my players, is one of his players. So he can't make a mistake. He therefore can't select David Luiz and try to man mark. Because if he tries to man mark that run, then he's free. And I also got someone coming in from outside the box as well. You can see over here with the Bamiyang. And you can see Semedo as well. You see Semedo? He's always occupying that player. And that's what I mean by it distorts your opponent's defense. Anyway, the key is being patient. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll catch you later on tonight on the stream on twitch.tv forward slash no guides forward slash yeah it's no twitch.tv forward slash no guys thank you very much for watching take it easy boys and I'll catch you next time peace out